Good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity in Fayetteville, North Carolina. This morning, we mark the third week of Advent. We have just a few announcements this morning. First off, today at one o'clock, we will have our annual meeting via Zoom. And so check your emails. You should have received an email with the video of the annual reports. And so today at one o'clock, we will address any questions or concerns regarding those reports as well as vote in our vestry members uh, for this coming year. Also, uh, you should have received notice that we have suspended all in-person worship until further notice, until the uh, COVID cases in Fayetteville and Cumberland County decline and stabilize. And so we will be um, still staying online. Our morning prayer online will continue. Our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day liturgies will continue, but all of it will be online. We will, though, on Wednesday mornings at noon, still hold our liturgy uh, Wednesdays at noon in person in the nave. Also, on the 19th, December 19th, we are opening up the narthex for pictures. And so we will have the Christmas tree set up. And so any families who would like to come in socially distant and have a Christmas portrait taken by the Christmas tree between 9 and 4 on the 19th, as well as any child who would like to come in and put on one of the costumes for the Christmas pageant, we will take their picture and put that all together for our Christmas Eve children's pageant uh, in this midst of COVID-19. We're trying our hardest to continue the traditions, but do it in a new and safe manner. Also on December 20th, the next day, next Sunday from 2 to 4, we will be putting on a live nativity on the Devane side of the church in the turnaround circle. And so the youth are sponsoring this, but it is open to anyone who would like to drive through the circle and um, share that with us, or anyone who would like to dress up and come join the party. Uh, so that will be two, Sunday from 2 to 4. And I have it on good authority that someone named St. Nicholas might be around with some gold coins. Um, and so if you have any little ones in your household or neighbors with little ones, please invite them to stop by again next Sunday, the 20th, from 2 to 4 on the Devane side of the church in that drive through circle. We are still taking contributions for Adopt-A-Family for our Christmas contribution to that ministry as well as uh, selling poinsettias, so you can get your money in and your, your note of thanksgiving or in memory of, of a family or a loved one. That can still take place this week. And a reminder that you can continue to pay your 2020 pledge up until December 31st, 2020. And so if you are behind, we would greatly appreciate any effort um, to make up that, that deficit. We are in in stable condition, um, but we still have a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. And so at this point, any pe every penny counts. We are also still taking pledge cards for 2021. And so if you have lost yours or misplaced it, please call the office and we will send you out a new one. Or you can go online on the website and um, fill out a pledge card that way on the give page or uh, send us an email and we'll get it out to you. Let us continue with the lighting of the Advent wreath. On this, the third week of Advent, we remember the gift of joy that we experience in Christ. We remember the joy that Mary felt when the angel Gabriel told her that a special child would be born to her, a child who would save and deliver all people. Joy is the gift we all receive from the unconditional love Christ has for us. God wants us to have joy. The angel who announced to the shepherds that Jesus had been born told them, do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news and great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. We light this candle as we remember that Christ came to bring true and everlasting joy to all people. As we light this candle, we are reminded that Christ came to bring eternal light to our lives 
and to our world. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the joy you bring us. Help us prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming by helping us see that Christ came for every person we meet, wherever we go. We ask this in the tender name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and light bearer. Amen. I invite you to take this time to recall the presence of Christ. Hymn number 76, verses 1, 2, and 5. begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your PDF file found on the website at www.holytrinityfay.org. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for all those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garment instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint, faint spirit. They will be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall bind up the ancient ruins. 
They shall bind up, raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. Whose all who see them shall acknowledge that they are all, they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its roots, and the garden causes what is sown to spring up, so the Lord will God will righteousness, cause righteousness and praise, and spring up before all nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his, low, on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Have mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud of their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophet, but, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Elijah said. 
Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This morning's gospel presents a very interesting question to John, and through that question, to us. Who are you? Who are we? Who are we as Christians? Well, today we mark the Sunday of joy, where we get to read the Magnificat. It's the only Sunday out of the year that we are able to read Canticle 15. Anyone who does evening prayer as a practice will know that we read that quite often in evening prayer. But it's hard for a preacher to get through today uh, and not bring up the Magnificat. And so that's what I want to talk about today because I think that that helps us answer who we are, who we are as Christians. And so there's some very interesting lines in the Magnificat some that I really want to point out. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. What an amazing set of words. What amazing imagery to connect to Mary. But that's exactly who Mary was. Mary says yes to God in a very, very profound way. Single woman in a, in a time period when women were owned. They were looked at as a piece of property. And she turns up pregnant. Normally, that would have her stoned. And Joseph would definitely not have stayed in the picture at all. So even through the conception of Jesus, the story gets turned on its side. And so when we say yes to God, when we say yes that we will do God's work, so many people think that that is some kind of a holy, peace-filled moment. Well, any of us who have done that will know that when you say yes to God, hold on because you are in for the ride of your life. I tend to call it holy chaos. When we do God's work, when we do the ministry of the church, the ministry that God lays in our hearts, oh, you've got to know things are going to change. Otherwise, God wouldn't need us. God needs us to promote change. He needs us to tip the world on its side. He needs us to shake up culture. That's why the the scripture says, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. But who things are going to change? But don't be afraid because God's in the middle of it. When we say yes to God's will and we have the courage that Mary exemplifies in her fearless yes Gabriel, yes, Holy Spirit, yes, God, creator, and divine being. Use me as your vessel. When we have the courage and the faith to say that kind of yes, we can't help but change the world. We can't help but change those around us. That is what the Magnificat is about. We change the normal We turn it on its side, we shake it loose, and something new and beautiful is birthed. 
And through that birthing of something new and beautiful, we find the strength to rejoice in it, which is why I wear rose today. It's Rejoice Sunday. It's Joy Sunday. We are not supposed to keep walking the norm. We are supposed to cause holy chaos with everything around us, using God as our barometer, God as our guide, Scripture as our touchstone. Over and over and over again in Scripture, things are turned around. And they're turned around by the least expected people, people just like you and me. Moses, who had a stammer. John, who is a weird duck, right? It's us. God is relying on us to have the courage and the faith to say, yes, use me, put me to work. I want to create holy chaos. I want to do your will here on earth. I want people to see your light through my actions, through my words. I want to change the peace of the world that I call home. The city that I call my hometown. I want to be different because I was here, because I followed you. I had the courage to use your strength that you pour into me every second of every day. Don't continue to live the norm. Open our hearts to God, to the joy that God fills us with, to the power and the strength that we pray about every single Sunday, especially today. Today is just filled with the idea of God's strength and God's power. Be instruments of that power. Let it flow through you. Let it change everything around us. Let it give us something to rejoice in, something to find joy in, something that others can find joy and hope in being around us. Please stand as you are able. Our liturgy continues with the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Prayer for the people this morning is Form 5, which may be found on page 390 of the prayer book or in your bulletin. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, 
Lord of mercy, for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and can be found without fault the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Rob, our bishops, for all bishops and other ministries, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you are in the Father O one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of a church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the highest light of the gospel. And we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those of, in positions of public trust, especially Donald, our pres president, Roy, our governor, and Mitch, our mayor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person we, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those, for all who live and work in this community, especially those in the armed forces, all first responders, medical personnel, teachers, and caregivers, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the blessing upon all human labor, for the light of the use of the riches of the creation, that the world may be free from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present, and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from the hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, that they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of our church, and whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest and peace, that they pray, that in a place where there is no pain, in grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing of the, of our, of the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and to and one another for all our Christ, our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. I invite your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, either aloud or in the holy silence of your hearts. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I now invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with those in your household. And later on today, send a text or call someone who weighs on your heart. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Come on down, kiddos, have a seat. Come on down. How are you doing? Are you doing all right? Uh, so, today I want to talk about the color of the vestment that I'm wearing. You will only see rose twice a year. And the priest only wears the color rose or pink halfway through Advent and halfway through Lent. And so both of these Sundays, are joyful Sundays, even though the season is seasons of preparation and can be somewhat solemn or serious seasons. The church picks one Sunday in each of these seasons to celebrate and to be joyful. And so we are in the season of Advent. And so today is called Rose Sunday or Gaudete Sunday, if you're into Latin. And what Gaudete means in Latin is to rejoice. So a lot of people will call this the Sunday of joy. And so what are we rejoicing about? What are we joyful about? Well, we're joyful because Christmas is almost here. And so for some of you, Christmas means Santa coming down the chimney, and that is a joyful thing. It's something to rejoice. But for the church, we celebrate the birth of Christ, that God has sent the light of his son into the world. And so what do we do with that? What do we, what do, we do with that as, as young Christians? Well, what happens when something really good happens to you? What do you want to do? Do you want to uh, keep it to yourself? When you get the ultimate birthday present, like the ultimate birthday present, what do you want to do as soon as you get it? You want to play with it, right? But you want to go and show your friends. You want to text your best friends or go running out to your neighbor's house and knock on the door and say, look what I got. Isn't this an awesome birthday present? Well, that's exactly what this Sunday is about. That's exactly what we do as Christians. We are getting the ultimate present in a few weeks on Christmas Day, and that is the birth of Jesus. Without Jesus, we would have very little to celebrate centuries and centuries and generations and generations and generations waited for the birth of what they call the Messiah, the anointed one. They waited and they waited and they waited. And finally, on a cold night in the middle of the desert, Jesus is born. And so today's message is when something good happens to you, go out and share it. Go tell all your friends when God gives you something, when God is, is alive in your life and you realize it, when you have that special prayer and all of a sudden it becomes a reality, those are the moments to rejoice. When you have a new friend or someone that you didn't think could ever be your friend and then all of a sudden they turn out to be your best friend, those are the moments to rejoice. That's what this Sunday is all about. This Sunday is asking us to remember those moments of unexpected happiness, unexpected joy. Don't keep them to ourselves. Go tell your friends, go tell your family. It is through the sharing of those good stories, of those joyful moments in our lives that brings joy to other people. That's what it means to rejoice. 
Rejoice means to share that joy with others around you. I can't wait to hear what your joyful stories are and what you are able to share and rejoice with those around you and with your family. Can't wait to hear those stories. I also can't wait to see you dressed up in your shepherd costumes and your angel costumes. And so if you're in Fayetteville, come on over next week and get in a costume and we'll take your picture. And the very next day, we're going to have a live nativity. Do you know what that means, a live nativity? I'm going to give you a secret. Next Sunday afternoon, I have heard that we are going to have a live donkey at Holy Trinity. <laughs> Anybody who knows me loves, I love live donkeys. I love donkeys. And so we are going to have one right here at Holy Trinity. And I also have it on good authority. I also have it on somebody that I trust implicitly has told me that St. Nicholas might also make an appearance next Sunday from 2 to 4 in our live manger scene, our live nativity scene. So I can't wait to see you in person. We'll keep distant. We'll wave at each other. But I can't wait to see your smiling faces. If you are not in Fayetteville, send me a picture. I would love to see all your faces. Take care. Be good. Stay healthy. I love you all very, very much. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Therefore, we praise you.
joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Baptist, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please join me for the prayer of communion with Christ found in your PDF. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, 
where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Our liturgy continues with the post-communion prayer found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your PDF file. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The response to each sentence is Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoiced in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and those you love, here on earth and in heaven, today and always. Amen. Hymn number 64, verses 1, 2, and 5. God's hand on. 
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.